What is going on boys and girls? Welcome back to the channel. I haven't done an air gun video in a while, so uh, I figured, uh, you know, why not uh, take out the big bore? This is the first uh, big bore I've ever had. This is the Adamin M2R in 357. Got this guy from uh, Pyramid Air. Uh, actually, it was a refurb, so I kind of took a chance on that. It's first time buying a refurb gun, but the price was right. It was extremely reduced. And then, much to my surprise, I figured, why the heck not try to apply the 10% uh, discount code on checkout, which you typically cannot do on rifles. But since it was a refurb, I figured, why not try? Went ahead and applied the 10% uh, off after the already reduced price, and it went through. So I got the gun for borderline dirt cheap. Um, had it for a couple of months now. Obviously, haven't done any videos on it. Um, it does fill to 300 bar, so it, it's it's a high filling gun. You don't have to fill it that high, but that's going to give you your highest shot count. Adamant, I think, um, they claim that you can get 11 full power shots from a charge at 300 bar. Um, I've got off camera here behind my bag, I've got a 74 cubic foot tank uh, that I fill with a Yong Heng compressor, and I fill, I've been filling this to 310 bar, just keeping an eye on the temperatures for the compressor and everything's been filling and working just fine. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is I've got a target at 50 yards downrange or 50 yards zero. Um, I'm, gonna take, uh, four, I'm gonna take as many shots untethered as I can until it drops off the regulator just to see, um, because to segue into my next point, the next thing I should mention uh, when I got the rifle, uh, everything looked great on it. It really doesn't have any blemishes that I can see. I always prefer these uh, these traditional walnut stocks. This is a right hand thumb hole stock. Um, just always really like them over the tactical models. I don't know what it is. I guess I'm more of a traditionalist that way. But um, the one thing that I did notice when I got the gun is that even though I paid for the 10 for 10 from Pyramid Air and the inspector uh, said, yep, ship it, it's A-OK, -okay, it was shooting between 750 and 800 feet per second, which is low for this gun. This gun is rated at 900 feet per second, and it was shooting between 750 and 800. So then I started wondering, okay, um, do I have something wrong with the rifle? Is that why the previous owner had returned it for the refurb? Um, so I've, I've had PCPs for quite a while. This is my first big bore, like I said. So I started looking around, and the first thing I noticed on the gun, I'll put a picture up here, the hammer spring screw was backed out quite a few turns, which, as a lot of us air gunners know, uh, if the hammer spring screw is backed out, the hammer's gonna hit the valve with less force. It's gonna allow less air to be released. That's gonna result in a reduced, uh, reduced velocity shot. So I turned that all the way in, basically so it sits flush with the end of the breech block. Um, you had to buy a special, uh, bought my special little shank bit that uh, you had to turn it in with. But once I did that, I'll throw up a chronograph picture here. I got the velocity up to about 870. Um, I did, in the interest of trust but verify, I did shoot the gun over the chronograph when I got it, even though the uh, inspector had marked 10 shots. Sure enough, uh, he was correct. Uh, they were correct that it was shooting between 750 and 800. So I thought that was low. Um, so adjusted the hammer spring, got it shooting about 870, a lot closer to 900, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, the only other thing I could say is there's a real small blemish on the end of the, uh, the barrel screw there. I'll probably end up getting a uh, Donnie FL uh, to put on that shortly just to uh, quiet it down a little bit. Really not too too loud, but in any case, um, we'll grab you guys, go over the gun here quick. So really, just about right here, it's got a small mark on it. I can't even be too upset at that. The rest of the gun, yeah, it's a little bit dirty. I've got a, a Hawk first focal plane, six to 24 power scope on it, and uh, really good scope. Like we said, the 357, uh, biggest bore that I own to date. So the first thing we're gonna do is we got the target down range there at 50, that's our zero. Gonna go ahead and put the other GoPro down there and I'm just gonna shoot it until the point of impact start, starts to shift and we'll see, uh, we'll see when it drops off the regulator and see how many shots we get. I'm betting we'll get at least two full magazines. It's a uh, seven round mag, so I'm guessing that we're gonna get 14 rounds uh, at full power, or at least close enough uh, at 50 yards where it's not gonna really change the POI. Uh, so I'll go get the uh, GoPro set up down there and uh, we'll see what we can do. All right, we got the camera rolling down range at the target, 50 yards. Gonna take uh, as many shots as we can before the uh, POI drops off. 
see how many mags we get just uh, for the sake of science. I'm not uh, bench resting this gun or anything, so the group should still be fairly decent off the bipod, but I don't expect perfection. So let's see what we can do. I think I've got my GoPro far enough out of the way where I'm not going to shoot it. So shot number one. It is a single stage trigger, um, very smooth, has a little bit more travel than I'd like, but uh, not bad once you get used to the let off point. Shot two. Sorry for the droning of the lawnmower. It seems like I'm, I'm cursed. Every time I shoot, my neighbors decide to mow the lawn. Shot three. Shot number four. And the other thing that I should mention about the big bores is uh, they tend to be inherently, only slightly, but inherently less accurate because you're launching a larger chunk of lead. So when you measure your group center to center, uh, they're just going to be larger. That's the nature of a big bore. And uh, I've noticed that from watching other people's videos. Now that I have one in my own possession, I've kind of noticed the same thing. My 30 caliber can put them more or less pellet on pellet. Wind's picking up a little bit. So far, they're so far they're all pretty much grouped in a nice little ragged hole. Yeah, could be better, but I'm not going to be too picky. We're just seeing where it's going to drop off the rag. And okay, that was seven shots. So now we're going to load up the magazine. The magazine is a um, it's a spring tension rotary magazine. It does have a, um, a locking mechanism where every time you rack one, uh, until you pull the bolt out, the magazine will not advance to the next position, which is kind of nice. It locks at every single shot, so that's good. Um, these magazines are quite expensive, <laughs> so if you do own this gun, definitely don't lose it. They're like, I don't know, I think they're 115 or 120 bucks per magazine. And then you just basically wind it all the way till the spring tension gets as tight as it can go. Load your first round and keep going. Check our bubble level. All right, we're good to go. Shot number eight. Cool. Still pretty much punching out the same holes in the group down there. Shot nine. Oh yeah. Shot number 10. And shot number 11. So this is how many shots they claim you get on a fill. Still looks like we're grouping fairly well. Before I load the next round, just out of curiosity, that was 11 shots. You see what the pressure gauge is at. So we're basically at about 220 bar right now. Um, I don't know if this falls off the regulator at 160 bar or so. I guess we will see in the name of science. Okay, that one went maybe a little bit low right, but still perfectly within the kill zone for a big bore. Still looks like we're in the same group. Okay, that one just dropped. 
That one just dropped right there. So, oh, and that was the very last shot. So there you go. I mean, and looking at that last shot where it dropped to, it should be fairly close. So magazine's empty. Let's take a walk down just to see. Yeah, that last shot was obviously off the reg. Let's stop this GoPro. All right, got the target back down by the rifle. So turn on our calipers, zero them. And yeah, this is kind of what I mean inherently with a big bore. You're shooting a bigger projectile. So this group here, and God, there's got to be, what? Well, I mean, there's got to be at least seven shots in there. That's exactly an inch. Um, we want to really be picky and go all the way outside to outside. Probably looking at, there's 1.63. Yeah, I mean, less than one and three quarter inch group. And I mean, I wasn't, wasn't exactly bench resting or anything like that, just to get an idea. Um, the rifle ended up at just over 200 bar. And remember, Action's open, we are empty. Um, so apparently it falls off the reg a little over 200, which I guess might make sense for the big bore. So um, yeah, good experiment to do nevertheless. So uh, yeah, let's basically just uh, blast some targets now. I've got, uh, my wife's got some expired Seagrams down there, uh, old White Claws, got some bottles, got a uh, bush can out there at, oh, uh, let's see, I did not range it. I can do the old digital zoom here. From this camera so you guys can see it but if i range it got my range finder right here it is that one's at closer to 70 yards so um what i'm gonna do is throw this camera that i'm on right here the gopro 10 down there and shoot at 2.7k 240 fps see if we can get some cool slow-mo so i'll see what we could do all right so off camera we got everything all aired up got the mag loaded up ready to go so we're gonna be shooting tethered from now on, which for anybody that's not familiar with, uh, means that we are tethered to our air tank. And that's just going to uh, give us more consistency and prevent us from having to fill. So let's go ahead and take out this uh, Seagram's can. We are at about, eh, I think we're at about 30 yards for that guy. Range that one. Here we go. Got the camera rolling down range and I'm going to aim slightly high because the pellet should still be climbing at 25 with a 50 yard zero. So let's see what we can do. Very nice. down uh might as well get the white cloth send him beautiful there we go much better all right guys just wanted to say thanks for watching thanks for stopping by please remember to like and subscribe and we will catch you guys on the next one take it easy